Hello all, I'm going to be walking you through an overview of the Blackboard system. And first, we're going to start by signing in using our email address and the password that we have set up for our account. The Blackboard system is used for recording your credit card transactions with your Bethel issued credit card or for approving invoice requests that are being sent uh, by our accounts payable staff. So first, I want to start with um, navigating to the page that I'm at right now. This is the main page that you will be working with, but if for some reason you don't land on this page, you'll select a little menu in the top left hand corner here and click and select Financial Edge NXT. At that point, you should be brought to a landing page that looks like this, and you'll be able to select the Expenses tab and select Manage Expenses. Once you're here in the expense management page, you can notice that there are four tiles here. <clears throat> the first of which I want to talk about is the My Credit Card Transactions tile. It has open charges and credits, submitted charges, and rejected charges. Anything that needs your attention will have a little notification icon next to it. So really, um, just keep an eye out for anything that does have this notification icon whether that be a rejected charge or an open charge in credit, maybe somewhere even down here in the My Approval section. So first let's navigate here and we can navigate into this page by clicking the number itself. And these are the open charges and credits, which means we have not yet filled out this form to tell the accounting department where this transaction should be charged to budget-wise. So in a different video, I will give you more information on how to fill out this form. But for now, for these purposes, I will um, get back out to the Manage Expenses tab. Next is the submitted charges. These are just charges that you have submitted in the past. Lastly are rejected charges. These are charges that you completed the form, you sent it to someone for approval, but for some reason it has, it has been sent back to you to be corrected. Lastly, um, I want to, uh, or rather not lastly, but next I wanna move on to the My Approvals tile. This tile is for both credit card charges in this side and then invoice requests on this side. So this is a section that is for if you are a department head or someone that approves credit card transactions um, or invoice requests. When you submitted your transaction here, after you completed that form, it gets sent to your manager and they will receive it in this section in the My Approvals tile. And so when you click in here, you will have a list of transactions if you do approve credit card transactions, and you'll be able to see all the data that the person completed. This will help you to determine if an expense is being charged to the appropriate expense category and all those uh, other details. But again, there's going to be another video that goes into detail as to how you should be doing that. Uh, the pending request section is nearly identical in format as the credit card transactions section for approvals. The only difference is that anything that's coming through this side and the My Requests side will be for a check that is going to be issued. So that means an invoice or some other document was submitted to AP at BethelWeb.org and is requesting your approval in order for a check to be issued for that expense. Next, we have the My Invoice Request tile. This tile is for um, really just one-off reimbursement requests for your volunteers. For the most part, Judy, which uh, will be operating the AP at BethelWeb.org email address, will be creating invoice requests. So previously we had an Excel spreadsheet that you would use for your expense reports. You'll still be using that Excel spreadsheet, but you'll be emailing it along with your receipts to AP at BethelWeb.org in order for the process to begin. At that point, Judy will take that expense report and corresponding receipts and send it and add it into this uh, My Invoice Request section on her profile and send it to the appropriate parties for approval. The system has baked into it the pre-established dollar thresholds for executive staff approval 
in this case, at this point in time here in March of 2021, it's $500. So anything $500 or more will go to the appropriate person that approves the expense as well as the corresponding executive staff member. At this point in time, it's either David Harvey for operations or Brad Lagos for ministry staff. So I will go over how to complete this section in a different video as well. And we really won't even hop into it um, because of the level of depth that that video will cover. Next is the My Settings section. We'll briefly touch on this. This is personal settings for your account. Which email address you want notifications to be sent to. If you want to establish a default approval rule, you can do that. That'll sometimes make it easier for you to um, have to not select a new approver each time you fill out a credit card charge and so on and so forth. Here's the credit card notifications in the invoice request notifications section. You can select these options to change the frequency at which you receive emails related to invoice approvals or credit card approvals. You can do instantly, daily, weekly. I would not encourage monthly. I would probably encourage daily the most, but whatever works for you. Um, again, invoice request notifications, same style as up here. You can select the frequency. Lastly, here's the out of office forwarding, which basically is a feature that if you're out of the office, if an expense needs your approval, it won't be held up by you just because you're out of the office. So if you were going on vacation, you would check this box and select the appropriate person that you'd like the invoice request or credit card charge approval to be sent to. Lastly, you would hit save for any changes you make. Next, I want to touch briefly on this tab, which is the general ledger tab. This tab, if you navigate over to accounts, will show you all of the accounts that you have access to. Here, if there are any words typed into this section, um, you can exit them out to show a complete list of accounts that you have access to. This is a little search bar here, though, that we can search for an account that we're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for the pest control account. You should have recently received a list of accounts that you have access to. So I would go off of that if you're trying to look for uh, the name of an account in particular. But now that we've typed in pest control, we're going to navigate to the pest control account here. And I can click into it and select view full record. And here's where I can see budget data related to the current expense account that I'm viewing. I can see activity for year to date, and I can also see budget versus actual uh, activity year to date. So if you ever need more information or, or want to know how to better navigate this section, feel free to give me an email and I can walk you through it as there's a lot of things that you can do with this. Um, you can maximize and minimize all these little tiles so that you can see them better um, and you can rearrange them however you wish. That is done on a user by user basis so you're not changing it for everyone. While we're in here, I would like to discuss the account structure uh, briefly. The account structure is really only relevant these last three items. So there's three segments here. The first two are for the campus. CL stands for Cedar Lake. Uh, the next three digits are the department. 130 is the facilities and grounds department. And lastly is what we call the natural account code. The natural account code is the specific bucket or category that an expense would reside in. So when I put this account string together, it's 01-CL-130-6150, which is the Facilities and Grounds Department Pest Control Account at the Sear Lake campus. So that's how you can tell what an expense is. Similarly, the name of the account is based on the department name and the natural account code. It's a conjunction of the two. So you'll notice facilities and grounds is the department and pest control is a natural account name. So when you merge these two together, 
you get facilities and grounds pest control. Similarly, you can go into the general ledger and select projects to see which projects you have access to. And that will give you um, details on a project by project basis. Also, if and when you receive reports for your department, you will be able to access that reporting data when you click on the actual name of the account. That's something that I can walk you through on a, on a staff member by staff member basis so that you can better navigate that. Um, but that's pretty much it for the overall overview. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at cstukesbury at bethelweb.org. Thanks so much and have a great day.